This is High School Hoops, presented by Allied Services. Welcome inside the Student Union Center on the campus of Lackawanna College. We're in Lackawanna County. Tonight, it's a Lackawanna League Division I showdown as Scranton Prep takes on West Scranton. Good evening, everyone. I'm Bob Ide, and welcome to Allied Services High School Hoops. Joining me tonight, he knows a lot about basketball. He's played, he's coached, he's even refereed, he's Matt Schaefer. But Matt, let's talk about this division first. A lot of parity in this division this year. That's right. This is one of the best divisions locally in basketball. Abington, Valley View, Scranton, and the two tonight, Prep and West. This is a really strong division. Anyone can win any night here in this division. Our Toyota Spotlight players, we feature the top two scorers in this division. Let's start with Scranton Prep. It's Reese Merritt. That's right. Reese Merritt's a 6'7 senior. He's a Division I prospect. He has colleges looking. He can score inside. He can score outside. He's a do-it-all kind of athlete for Scranton Prep. For West Scranton, uh, Caden Merrifield, he played a lot last year as an underclassman. Now he's a junior. That's right. 5'11 junior can do it all. The ball will go through him. He'll control tempo. He'll control pace. He'll do everything for West Scranton on both sides of the ball. He's a leader, he's a great player. West needs him to have a big night. You have seen these two teams play, so let's check out your keys to the game. Let's start with the Cavaliers first. That's right, Prep needs to shut down Merrifield. They also need to make sure that they score in the paint. If they do both of those, then they know that, we that Prep will have a very good shot at winning this evening. West Scranton needs to make sure that they limit the shots and they need to make sure that they control the tempo tonight. And if West Scranton can do that, they'll give prep fits all night long. Well, it should be a good one here in Division One of the Lackawanna League. When we return, we'll have the opening tip and the starting lineups. You're watching High School Hoops, presented by Allied Services. Here are your figure off for starting lineups. First for the Cavaliers to come in nine and two. Your guards will be McAndrew, Bednars, and Scoff. Forwards, Robert Rossi, a sophomore, and Reese Merritt. For the Invaders, well, they play a lot of guards, but most of them are Lewin Fernandez, Merrifield, and Forsetti. Right will be a guard. Forsetti and Barnes will be your forwards. Merritt wins the toss, and Scranton Prep controls the opening tip. What kind of game do you want to see, Matt? Well, if you're a Prep fan, you want to see a lot of that, athleticism. Prep has eight guys taller than West's tallest guy. So one of the important things that Prep could do tonight is score in the paint. If West. you're West, you've got to slow the ball down. You want to limit the number of shots. You want to take your chances. You want to be physical and tough. You're undersized. Your tallest player is six foot three, so you've got to play smart, take open shots, and play really tough defense. The Invaders come in after a loss to Abington Heights on Friday, 35 to 28. That's the type of score you want to want to see if you're a West Scranton fan. You want to keep it low scoring. Here's Marin, a left Ooh. alone, and just goes out of bounds. I think he thought about what type of dunk he was going to do first. There are your referees tonight, Spencer Williams, Scott Shimko, and Joe Moser. Very good young crew of officials this evening. Matt, a one-time referee himself. Oh, I coach, so doesn't that make me a referee by default as well? <laughs> I don't know. Preps already got two steals tonight. The defense, Goff brings it up. You're wondering why Wes Granton play, is playing some games at Lackawanna College. If you ever been in the West Granton gym, it's probably half the size of this. I've been in classrooms bigger than West Granton's gym. There's Rossi for his first two. He's going to be important tonight. I think we'll talk about him in a little bit, but Robert Rossi has a, a great shot at being the guy that dictates the win tonight. That's Merrifield. He'll draw a lot of attention, as expected, from the Cavaliers. Outside the Forsetti, count it for three. And I think for West, he, uh, Nick Forsetti is a key to tonight's game as well. He has to play number two. He has to play 
He has to play Robin to Caden Merrifield's Batman. Quick basket for Bednars, who takes it easily to the glass. Prep picking up a full court, not necessarily to speed him up or to turn him over, but you never know when you'll get one. Merrifield double teamed in the corner. Nice little soft touch from Londell Wright, the 5'10 junior. Nice Merrifield, you saw, got doubled in the corner. Scoff gets doubled in the paint, kick out. Gavin Bednars can't hit it. Merrifield is off to the races. This isn't the tempo that I thought you'd see from West, but a great move up and under inside left-hand finish on the right-hand side. Four straight for West Scranton to take the one-point lead. Back and forth, they're trading baskets right now here at the Student Union Center. Rossi again, he has four. He's a key sophomore, athletic, six foot four. Wouldn't be surprised if he ends up six seven by the time he leaves Scranton Prep. Well, West Scranton, they can score. They scored 64 against Honesdale. They've gotten 70s one time this year. Quick look to Fernandez. That's Caden Merrifield's second assist already. Like we said, everything that West wants to do is going to go through Caden Merrifield. Here come the Invaders back, up by one. A little quicker tempo than we had kind of expected. Nice move. Beautiful by Lewin Fernandez, open court. Fernandez has foo, four, excuse me. Biggest lead of the night for West Scranton. Scoff downtown, no good. Rebounding going to be an issue for West Scranton, doing a nice job there on the defensive boards to control this. One of the things West does, though, is they play a version of a pack line defense, and the pack line defense just means that they're going to be in the paint. We'll talk more about that after the Yeah, break. it's a quick one, a quick timeout on the floor, three-point lead for the home team. Andrews Kettle down, Andrew Kettle's team down 11-8. High School Hoops is brought to you by Sports Therapy Rehab and Allied Services. Whether you're a high school star or weekend warrior, our therapists can get you back in the game. Call 1-888-REHAB-PA or search Sports Medicine online at allied-services.org. Well, there is Andrew Kettle, seventh season with Scranton Prep. Has had a lot of success, won a bunch of district titles. I know one thing he'd like to do is maybe a little, go, go a little further in the state playoffs. But now we've seen the run into that Philadelphia team at some point. You know, that's a difficulty anytime you're you're in double A, triple A, quad A, is as soon as you get outside of our area, you end up being and they end up playing against a Philadelphia team and you can't replicate that speed through the course of the season. West Scranton is controlling the temple but a little bit faster than Maybe Matt and I had expected tonight. But back and forth, they've gone. Rossi, that's his third bucket already in this quarter. Scranton Prep brings David Blake off the bench. He's going to come in and guard Caden Merrifield. I wouldn't be surprised if you see Prep just run a new guy at him every two minutes. Quick step to the basket for Wright. Goes off the mark. Here come the Cavaliers. The other number 11. Loses the ball out of bounds and will stay underneath for the Cavaliers. It was Rossi's third rebound already as well. Weston affair too well last year in their last meeting, February 1st. A big 31 point win for Scranton Prep. Hopefully a little closer tonight. And that's uh, Bednars for another bucket. That's his second as well. And that gives Prep their uh, the lead back tonight. Four straight for them. From the corner, Merrifield, no good. It will go over to the Cavaliers. When we talk about basketball, you talk about longtime coaches. Of course, Kenny Bianchi's in this division, none longer too than Jack Lyons. He is, uh, Jack's been a staple in local basketball for four decades now. You think about yep. that? Five decades? Yeah. That's older than you, longer than much, you. Much, <laughs> much. 
And I said to him before the game, I said he looks a little bit younger every year. Travel in the post. I thought that was a uh, pretty good move. Uh, didn't get a good, good view. Here we go. Post entry. Oh, just little bunny steps. Little bunny steps. Got another sub coming into the game. Andrew Stark comes in. Bednars takes a seat. The difference in these two teams, you're going to see that Prep will go nine, even ten deep. Mm -hmm. West Scranton will play seven, seven maybe. Eight. Maybe. They've gone games where they only played the starting five all game. You talked about Bianchi. That's one of his staples. Double team on Merrifield. It's one of the things you've noticed. Every time Merrifield's touched it, as soon as he dribbles, he has a double. Barnes, no good. Here comes Scoff. Scoff is junior. Inside again to Rossi, and he's owned that paint so far tonight for Scranton Prep. He has eight. Four for four from the field. All good shots. Looks strong, looks confident. Very good young player. Two-sport athlete. I know he had a very good football season as well. Back out up top. Nolan Blondell Wright will call out the play. Cavaliers remain in the man-to-man. -man. Merrifield, no good. Scoff's fourth rebound early as well. Scoff and Rossi are both hitting the boards pretty hard. A little short on that shot by Stark. West can shoot from the outside. They have 78 three-pointers on the year as a team. They're also not shy shooting them either. No, not at all. Merrifield has 36 of them. Under a minute to play in the first quarter here in this Lackawanna League Division I matchup. Quick double team on Merritt turnover. Fernandez, an easy two. That was an example of trying too hard to get Reese the ball. Uh, had great post position early, ball gets swung. But West Scranton, one of the things, and we talked about this before we went to the break, West Scranton's going to play a version of the pack line. They're going to be out on the ball, but everyone else is going to have a foot close to or in the paint, which makes it very difficult to go directly to the paint in a post-up situation. Under five, four. Scoff, double team, and the hanging layup can't go. So we're back and forth here in an up tempo type game at Lackawanna College Student Union Center. It's the Cavaliers who lead the Invaders by one. Matt, we talked about one of the challenges tonight for West Scranton is in the paint and getting rebounds. Nick Forsetti matched up with Robert Rossi at some point. He's also playing against Reese Merritt. Nick Forsetti for West Strong, six foot junior, athletic. He's already hit a three this year, or excuse me, tonight. Uh, he's very strong. He's a key. Mm -hmm. for, for prep, Robert Rossi's playing great. He's got eight points, four boards. He's a 6'4 sophomore, dual sport athlete. Both players, their high this year is 16. For Forsetti, 16 was his high against Riverside in their Christmas tournament. And for Rossi, he scored 16 versus Hazleton. Either of them could go off for 20 tonight, especially given the tempo, the early tempo in this game. And if you're wondering, yes, there have been a lot of Rossies at Scranton Prep, <laughs> and maybe even one more on the way next year. Uh, yeah. You know, you, it's been fun to watch them, and the nice part is you look at the Rossi family, they're sitting here watching each other. Definitely a foul. Uh, good, strong take. One of the one of the moves not used enough by players is the pump fake. Takes a strong move to the basket. Brendan Barnes, he gets his feet under him. Pump fake, defense flies, and he goes up for the foul. He gets two shots. Fouls on Nicholas Caparella in the game. It's junior, 23 for Scranton Prep. And believe it or not, that was our first foul of the game. So right. very clean play, uh, clean played first quarter. Thought it was very well officiated too. Uh, it was great to see. Reese can do that all night long. 
Six foot seven, and he sits out at the three-point line. That's something I like to do. <laughs> and, and you did it pretty well. So it's 24 on the season for the 6'7 senior. And the Cavaliers up by two. If I remember right, Reese had five threes. Uh, was it last game, the game before? The nice part about having a 6'7 wing is that he can stretch a defense. It's a tough matchup. Because if he does get, if he does have someone that's undersized, you go to the post. And we saw that in the first quarter. Rossetti airs great one rebound. out. Nick Caffarella with a great rebound. Way to tip it to himself and go get it. Ryan McCandrew, the junior, with the ball. Good defense by Forsetti. It's going to remain Cavalier ball. Thought maybe it went off a foot of somebody. I think that's what Jack Lyons is saying, and they go off the foot of Reese Merritt. Referee five saying West no. Coast, the five West coaches are all <laughs> asking for the same thing. Patient offense this quarter. I thought coming into the game that prep would go up tempo and West would slow it down, and it's almost been the exact opposite. Another travel, it's a footwork travel. Yeah, Bednar's traveled, so Scranton Prep now looks like they'll pick up full court pressure. Here's that last travel. There you go. Just switched them, did it a little early. Merritt takes a seat. Looks like Scoff back into the game. Scoff and Rossi back in. Quick blow for those two. Get a quick break. Get back at it. Merrifield owns the ball. I love the tempo that they're playing with right now, though. Barnes will chuck one. Goes right to Rossi. Cavaliers can extend it. Scoff. Pop shot. No, but right to Rossi again. Nice. And move. they're going to get a foul from behind. He's active. That's what's making Robert Rossi so successful now. Offensively, you see the ball go up. He just out hustles everyone to the ball. By doing that, the defense is out of position. Rossi gets a foul on the defense. Scores his ninth point of the night. He's playing a great game. First free throw is good. He's usually 54% on the season. Looked pretty good there. Again, just a sophomore. Hits both. So back to a four point advantage for the Cavaliers. And if you're West, you can't let Prep go on a run or anything. You can't get this too far of a lead. You can't. You know, momentum is always big, especially in rivalry games. And as soon as someone can get momentum, four points can become eight points, and a two point advantage can become a 10 point advantage quickly. One of the things you want to do if you start to see the momentum going the other way is either slow the ball down or speed it up, but change your own pace to get yourself out of whatever's in there. Right in Good and is call. fouled. Good late call. That's more of the pace that maybe we expected to see from the invaders. Here you go, drive to the basket, hang. Really could have called it on either of them. Caffarella with his arm down a little bit and scoff on his back but it's a nice take. Right 60% on the year from the charity stripe. Looks like Merritt back into the game. Along with David Blake. Caffarella and McCandrew take a seat. I wouldn't be surprised if we see them in a minute or two. It's an opportunity there to cut into the lead and is no good. So it remains a four point advantage. Last time Prep played in this building, they lost to Holy Cross in the Line Edge Championship. Looking pretty good so far. A quick timeout called by the Invaders. Here's we talked a little bit about it in the pregame, but here are the standings. All the teams playing tonight. And again, a lot of parity. Again, to use that same word, Matt, uh, in this division. That's right. You know, one of the things we said earlier, any of these five teams, when they play the other, can, can win on any given night. Every team has something that they do very well that's difficult for each of the others to match up with. 
They all have tenured coaches that know exactly what they're trying to do. Great programs. Division one in the Lackawanna League is probably the best basketball in District Two. Yeah, in the last seven years, it's been Abington or Scranton Prep who's won the division. Don't be surprised if there's another name at the top at the end of the year. Well, take West, for example. They're a tough matchup. Yep. Persetti, again. Oh, right to Barnes. Garbage man. Just hang around, and eventually you'll get a couple points. But get kids stand at the three-point line. A shot goes up, and they still stand at the three-point line. They'll be the first kid to touch the ball. And if you're the first kid to touch the ball, you got a chance at a rebound. Here come the invaders. Take a Merrifield. No foul call. Had it blocked. Great hustle. David Blake with the D. Good job by Ben Nars to slow it down. It's becoming a track meet. And they'll want to set up a half-court offense. I think a track offense. meet helps prep, though. Mm -hmm. Which So I'm surprised he pulled it out a little bit. Right to the hole. Oh, blocked big by block Merritt. The rim. Another Rossi rebound. Scoff in and get double new. clutches. How about Mike Scoff the other day getting his first high school dunk? Fun to see the emotion on a player. Back to a six point advantage, yeah. Here you go. West is running a four out, one in, nope, a five out motion style offense pass cut through and replace and prep is still running a second defender at Merrifield on his Ooh. first dribble and that will take us to our immediate timeout 318 remaining in the half six point lead for the Cavaliers Matt Schaefer Bob I back for Lackawanna League Division One action. Here's what Prep has done this season so far. Mr. Schaefer, two losses, one to Norristown out of town, and a tough loss, as I mentioned, right here on this floor against Holy Cross by one. They were up, and Holy Cross just hit some threes. Tough win. Here's what I love about Scranton Prep's schedule is you start going down Hazleton out of the area, uh, Wilkes-Barre out of the area, Norristown team from out of the area, Wyoming Valley West, not a Lackawanna League team. Williamsport out of the area, Father Judge out of the area. They play a gauntlet before they get into the season so that they're already tested. They've played athletes, they've played speed, they've played size. And then they get into the Lackawanna League and it's a little bit more familiar. Nice take by Bednars. Strong to play through a little bump. Good no call. The junior with six so far. Biggest lead of the night now for the Cavaliers, up eight. We talked about West, they need to stay within 10 or less to have a chance, because they don't like to play from behind. They keep playing up tempo though, then it does give them a shot to stay in it. Barnes with six, nice move in the paint. 6-2 Junior. Really their tallest guy that's gonna play. Yeah at 6-2. I talked about it earlier. Prep has eight players that are 6-3 or above. West is essentially playing with five guards on the floor. That's why they like to slow it down and control the tempo. And so far, I think they're doing a nice job on the boards, too. Agreed. They, they are a very disciplined, accountable team. Meaning, if they're supposed to be blocking out, they block out. If they're supposed to rebound, they'll block out and then go get the ball. They're very disciplined with that. Jump ball. As Rossi got a hand on the ball with Barnes, it will go over to the Cavaliers. Good defense on ball, hand straight up. Good call by Mr. Shimko. Andrew Stark into the game. And now Wes Scranton. They'll pick up full court pressure. Andrew Kettle calls out motion. Rossi down low. Being guarded by Barnes and trying to get it in, they do. Rossi's a good passer too. A great all-around player. 
give him another assist. I think that's his second or third assist as well. I love the way Robert Rossi's playing tonight. Stark with a three, his eighth on the season, his first one this evening. Merrifield, up and under, no good. Love his athleticism though. Beat the double team to the baseline, gets a shot off, and then was the first one to touch his own rebound. Just three fouls so far in this game. Make that four as Rossi will go to the line. Nice strong move. One of the lost arts right now is when a player can catch the ball, square up and make one dribble into a move to score in the paint. In the fall, I had the opportunity to work with Coach Mike Shaw when we ran a guard big man camp. And all we did was just go through the reps of, of posting up, squaring up, drop steps, drop step counters, hooks. The right way to use your body in the post. That's a great example by Robert Rossi. First miss from the line for Rossi. He does have 11, though. He leads both teams in the scoring. 10-point lead for the Cavaliers, under a minute to play in the half. Their biggest lead of the evening. This is probably West's most important possession of the game so far. Because this is going to decide whether you're a double-digit lead, a double-digit deficit, or whether you can go in with momentum, get a little momentum back. Now you've given Prep the chance to hold for the last one. West had a very good first quarter. They led in the game, but since then it's all been Scranton Prep in quarter number two. Downtown for Scoff, no good. Stark loses it. Plenty of time, 12 seconds on the clock for West. 30 second timeout, Coach Kettle. It'll be West Ball coming in in the backcourt. I don't think he liked that shot. We looked at Scranton Prep previous games. How we take a look at West Scranton? They won the Toronis over against Riverside. They beat Stroudsburg, a bigger school in there. But you know, right now, just one and one in division play with Scranton and Abington. Common opponent here, obviously, is Williamsport. Um, very strong team. They are the flex team, I think they call it, yep. in District 2. Uh, Aaron Taylor, who played at Williamsport, coaches them still. Full court pressure here by Prep. They're going to put a physical David Blake on Merrifield. But West will get him the ball. They give it to Merrifield, under 10. Trying to get a screen, doesn't. He'll shoot from down there. Long distance, back of the rim. Barnes a shot at the buzzer, can't get in. So the Cavaliers of Scranton Prep open up a 10 point lead and they lead West Scranton at the half, 29 to 19. Coming up at the half, we'll check in with Paul Grippy and our friends from Allied Services. Then Matt and I will be back with analysis from the first half and highlights. It's Allied Services High School Oops on my TV. Halftime brings us to the facilities here at Allied Services on the Morgan Highway in Scranton and joined by a guest, Sandra Morgan, a physical therapist here. And Sandra pays particular attention to concussions, which is a topic that we're all aware of and certainly hear and see a lot about on a regular basis. So are we seeing more and more people come in for treatment of concussions over the past few years? We definitely are seeing more patients coming in. I think there's a greater awareness out in the community and with physicians nowadays, and patients know to go to the doctor a little quicker than they did before with their symptoms, and the doctors are referring them for some concussion management of their symptoms. But all this recent awareness and talk about it has really become a result of the science and more learning about what a concussion is and how concussions are diagnosed. So we have different ways of observing and seeing people with concussions now. Yes, definitely. The, there are um, some very common signs and symptoms of concussion. Oftentimes, people that you know have a concussion will complain of a headache. They'll have nausea, vomiting, dizziness, balance loss, confusion. 
um, they lose their memory. They might not remember um, what happened directly before or after the event um, that caused the concussion. And some of these signs and symptoms might occur right after the concussion, um, but some of them might appear um, hours or even days later. Okay, so Allied Services is certainly devoted to treating and rehabilitating people with concussions, but what happens immediately when someone sustains a concussion? What advice would you give them for the immediate treatment? Often what's recommended the first 24 to 48 hours um, is rest, and it means total rest of your brain. So usually what's recommended is to really decrease, we call it screen time. Um, we don't want patients on their phones a whole lot, the computer screen, the TV, video games. They really need to give their brain a good rest. They need to take some physical rest as well. They shouldn't be playing their sport if they're an athlete um, for you know the first few days and then they're checked out by their doctor. Sometimes what happens is patients might just recover on their own within one to two weeks. We tend to see patients here in the clinic usually after about three weeks and they're still having some issues, uh, some problems, signs and symptoms at that point. Okay, so after the immediate diagnosis and the rest, what is the rehabilitation like over the next few days and weeks if someone were to come and to Allied and get some sort of treatment? Well, here we have a unique program for concussion because we can offer physical, occupational, and speech therapy to those patients. So under the physical therapy umbrella, we're helping them to decrease their headache. We can help decrease their dizziness through some visual tracking exercises, eye head coordination movement exercises. We work on their balance and stability. We actually have a piece of equipment that we use that can address like evaluating their balance and training them on that piece of equipment as well. And the other um, aspect that they're having difficulty with is exercise. Because they're um, exercising and trying to increase their heart rate, that increased blood flow to the brain, their brain just can't handle it. So we need to determine, here in PT, what we can do is determine what's an appropriate heart rate for them to exercise at, what type of aerobic exercise they should be doing, and how to progress that program so that they learn to tolerate exercise again. So, you know, through the rehab process, if they're an athlete, we might incorporate their sport into their treatment. If it's an adult and they need to go back to work, we can simulate maybe their work environment or if recreation is their goal, maybe a recreational activity. Um, the occupational therapist, um, they're going to address more of the vision difficulties. So patients that have had a concussion will have difficulty with double vision. They can't track words across a page. They have problems with motion, like observing motion and watching moving objects. They're very motion sensitive. So the occupational therapist has um, a special computer that they use for vision therapy and different optical equipment that they can use as well to help improve visual performance. And then the last piece is the speech therapy and they address the cognitive difficulties that a person is having after concussion. So they have memory loss, learning and attention problems, multitasking, organization and planning. They have difficulty with all of that. So they'll address those issues and you know, help them to compensate for those difficulties. Okay, so very important to get those concussions treated, follow up with the rehab to avoid the lingering effects of a concussion over a period of years. Thank you to Sandra Morgan, physical therapist here at Allied Services. We'll be back with more basketball. You're watching Allied Services High School Hoops on my TV, WQMY. Halftime continues here at the Lackawanna College Student Union Center. 29-19, your score. The Cavaliers leading the Invaders. Bob Ide and Mr. Matt Schaefer, we are courtside enjoying what we thought was going to be a low-scoring, slow-down type tempo game. Matt, but West came out and wanted to run a little bit tonight. Yeah, they, they reversed tempos. <laughs> I thought that Prep would want to speed it up, but West would want to slow it down, and it seemed like in the first half, it was the exact opposite. Uh, we talked about two key players before the game, Reese Merritt and Caden Merrifield. Both of them really have been not been a part of this game. They both struggled shooting. I think between the two, there's only two buckets. Yeah. Uh, Merrifield only has one. one. Uh, I think he's missed four or five three-point yep. shots. He's had the opportunity. Reese Merritt, I feel, uh, you know, if you watched him in the first half, forced a couple shots, but that's his role on Prep's team and Merrifield's role on West. Let's take a look at some of the first half 
highlights. Back and forth they went. Robert Rossi hit it early. Kick out for West to Nick Forsetti. His three-pointer. Gavin Bednar, strong take, great first half, strong take to the basket. You see here, Prep tried to run double teams. So Merrifield just gets it to Londell right for a little floater. Merrifield's only basket, nice lefty. Then you see Reese Merritt's three-pointer from the top of the key. Roll that one in. And then a really nice take by Mike Scoff to the basket. Barnes having a nice half for Wes Granton. He's their leading scorer with six. Yep. Nice kick out here. Another bucket, this time by Andrew Stark with a three. So we were ready to go. What do you expect in the second half, Matt? Well, if you're West, you're going to have to you're going to have to pick up your defensive intensity a little bit. Um, you may have to start to force tempo with defensive pressure. If you're Scranton prep, you want to keep going. You don't want to slow it down too early because that can play into to West's hands a little bit. You want to use your size. You used your size well in the first half offensively. Nice take. Good block. Yeah, Forsetti had it blocked. Tandem of Merritt and Rossi. Into Merritt, triple teamed, take it away. Barnes chased down by McAndrew, lays it in. Might have been a little contact on the post. You see West trying to force some tempo. Prep doesn't mind playing up, up tempo at all. Comes. Lewin Fernandez slows it down, and they'll get it to Merrifield near midcourt. Chance now to cut into that Cavalier lead, which was 10 at the half. That was the largest of the night for either team. Merrifield with just two points. Nice grab by Forsetti and a good pump fake. That was a great pass, great baseline take by Londell Wright. Forsetti seals. Londell White with a drop pass and a strong move in the paint. Persetti, 16 on the, is high this season. Came against Riverside. Here's Merritt. Love how hard Merritt's going to the basket. Same with Rossi. And Rossi gets fouled. He'll go for two shots. This will probably be on Barr. Last bucket. You see Brendan. Brendan Barnes takes it full court. And then the drop pass we just talked about. Foul was on Fernandez, his first. Rossi to the line is his third trip to the line. I yep, think. four for five on the evening. He came in shooting 54% on the year. It's like he's worked on that a lot. Nice spin and rotation, and he gets it in. 13 for the sophomore. Now you've rotated Scoff onto Merrifield. Scoff's advantage here is that he's a long defender, really athletic. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you see Mike Scoff end up at a Division I school playing basketball. Very long, very athletic. He's got some work to do, but he's, he's got a great base, good start. He's coming into his own, no doubt. Fernandez tried to take it one-on-one, -on -one, gives it back to Merrifield. West very deliberate. Got to look for the best shot they can. Drive and kick, make one more pass. It's a Jack Lyons philosophy in offense. There's someone else that'll be open. I'd like to see Prep, though, try to get Reese Merritt the ball here. He's got some size. <laughs> Your 6'4 sophomore wants to step out and hit a three. That helps, too. Barnes trying to match that camp. Andrew Kettle mentioned Rossi. He could be the next Division I prospect. I, I think so. I, I think for I basketball. Think Prep may have three Division I basketball players on their team right now in Reese Merritt, Mike Scoff, and Robert Rossi. Um, I know that they, they all have the tools there. You just got to catch a break. Nice tip by Barnes, yeah. he's playing well. He is playing well inside. But West needs to get into the lead, not match baskets with the Cavaliers. 
Scoff, cut off. Look in. There he is. Big, strong Merritt. move. Hoop in the harm for Reese Merritt. Great move. That's what I wanted to see. And he hasn't been shy with it. He's trying to go strong to the basket. He's just had a couple that didn't go. There was textbook. Ball comes in from the wing. Post player catches it, squares the foot to the baseline, shoulders to the backboard, and goes up strong for an and one. Merritt, 77%, hits that. He did have 30 as high this year already against Wyoming Valley West. He's had a great first half of the year. Great first half of the year. Well, he was hurt, injured last year, mm -hmm. uh, playing with Leo Boyle. Yep. Merrifield in and out, can't find his shot. Now Great West pass. looking to blow it open. So 12-point lead, and it will remain underneath for Scranton Prep. Good hustle play. Ball's on the ground. Forsetti gets on the ground. And immediately you see David Blake for prep get in there and tie it up. Scoff to Merritt. Step and shoot, no good. And Scoff, we picked up a cheap foul. Reese with a quick trigger on that one. But he's got the freedom to do that. You're a senior leader, you've earned that. You can knock it down. You've been playing well. If he gets one of these shots to go, it's an avalanche for Reese Merritt. He's and that type of player. Andrew Stark back anywhere. in for Scranton Prep. Matt, what do you want to see better from West? They just need to make some shots. That's it. They live at the three-point line. They really do. And if you watch, right now they're five out. So all five players at some point end up at the, at the three-point line. So what they're trying to do is get themselves to the free throw line area and then make someone better. It hits, hits the top, and it should be a timeout on the floor. 3.40 left in the third quarter. 12-point lead for Scranton Prep. We'll be right back. From creator Ryan Murphy, 911 Lone Star follows a sophisticated New York cop played by Rob Lowe to Austin on this two night premiere event beginning this Sunday after football, only on Fox 56. Bob Ide, Matt Schaefer, we're in downtown Scranton. A little Lackawanna League Division One action between Prep and West Scranton. It was a 10 point lead for the Cavaliers at the half. They've extended it by two so far. That's right. West just needs to get a bucket. Uh, I think that's very important here. They want to end the third quarter. They don't want to be down double digits starting the fourth quarter. West needs to, they, they put the ball in Merrifield's hands. He's their guy. Yeah, 19 points coming in, has two so far. That's right. And what, if you watch what Prep's done, Prep has just rotated guys on him. All kinds of length, too. That really seems like that's... Well, the difficulty if you're an offensive player like Caden Merrifield is sometimes you can get into a rhythm. If they bring a guard off the bench every single time and the guy guarding you is five foot eight, five foot nine, five foot ten, then you're going to get into a rhythm of what you can get to. What Prep's done fantastic is they've brought a 5'10 guard. They've brought a, a tough guy. They've brought a long guy. They've brought a quick guy. And they've just gone back and forth with different types of defenders. Nice job by Forsetti. First he gets the offensive rebound, then this. Patient in the post. We talked earlier, a little head fake. Defense goes up, and Forsetti earns two shots at the line. He's just six foot. He's playing much bigger than that tonight. Goes to the line, back of the rim. Averages eight points. Did have, again, 16 against Riverside, shooting... 55% is for Seti from the line. Free He's, throw shooting's a lost art. Yeah. I, mean, I look I look at some of these numbers. 55, 50, 55, 60, 52. Free throws, free points. Sometimes they shoot better behind the arc on three points. If you watch most kids in practice, they're going to work on their three-point shot more than they work on their free throw. Free throw's a great opportunity for you to work on your form shooting and something that's going to help not only your team, but yourself. Nice ball movement by Prep. 
into the paint. Two shots by Stark. And finally, Blake is going to go to the line. Good ball movement. Nice set by Prep. Took 30 seconds off the clock, just working the ball. Patient, deliberate, and then they go get the rebound. For Setti's second foul, both teams have three team fouls in this half. Blake came in one for two from the line and hits that one. He's a senior. Be nice to see the senior class go on a run in states like we talked about. But again, you're going to end up with the Newman Goretti. Imhotep. Imhotep. Yep. I think Imhotep, did they bump down yeah. the class? I'll have to look at that. Either way, you're yep. running, you're running to, to District 1. Barnes has felt it tonight, and it's that one. It's a big three-pointer from Brandon Barnes. West is trying to do the same thing, drive and kick. I talked to all the little kids that I coach about trying to get to what we call the secret sauce, which is the area right around the foul line. Because if you can get to that area, you can make someone else on the court better. Merrifield. What a great pass. Ooh, oh. missed, a, missed a goaltending. That should have been goaltending, I think, Matt. Jack Lyons thinks so. No, the referees had called it. We may be able to see it from our camera behind the basket. Great block. I mean, it goes down as a block. Ball hits the backboard. Then it's blocked. Guess that's the referee. And there's classic Jack. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Oh, you just saw it on the end. Yeah, that's a tough angle. What a nice shot, though. I like that behind the basket shot. Credit to our crew in the truck. That'll look good. Someone finishes at the rim, that'll look good. Down the, so it's a 10-point lead for Prep. Barnes, up and in. Corsetti has three assists all to Barnes in this quarter. Those two have something going. 15 points for Brandon Barnes. He had 17 against Pittston area and just three against Abington, and he's showing it off tonight. Here, five A standings right now while the Paul Pack at the top just got beat last week, I believe, by Abington Heights, Matt. That's right. But Elijah Rosenthal's having a great oh, season. Fantastic. Very good player. Very we'll see good. Crestwood against Wooksbury later on this season. Belinsky's coaching a strong Dallas yep. squad. We saw Dallas Atherton, a legend. Yep. Coaching, his dad was the legend from Luzerne County Community College. His son coaches at Crestwood. So it's a, I think that's a wide open district. I don't know if there's a clear cut favor. Maybe Wall and Paul Pack with the experience, Rosenthal, but boy, Dallas and Crestwood are going to be tough. The nice part is they get three to states, I believe. So the hardest part of that one's going to be the uh, Thursday night game, Wednesday, Thursday district game there. That'll have more impact than, than your championship. Yep. Cavaliers with the eight point lead. It was 12 at one point in this quarter. West needs a stop here after the timeout. Trying to force it to Rossi, but a foul against the Cavaliers. Good post entry, Reese Merritt, very athletic to go get the ball. Just rushed his pass to the paint. I think if Reese Merritt catches that ball in the, on the post, squares up, whether it's a Sigma move or some type of face up, I think he's gonna see that he can shoot over the defender. Bednar's first foul. Barnes, almost, this place would have erupted if that went in. Corsetti is playing tough. Another offensive board for West Scranton. Lando Wright thought about it. Good job by West. And the other thing you see, Caden Merrifield, they're also not forcing Caden Merrifield, and Caden's not forcing his shot, but they've been able to trim it to eight. If prep scores here, you're down double figures. If West can get a stop here with 40 seconds left in the third and go down and score, you have momentum going into the fourth. Prep just needs to settle down. Deep breath. Merrifield with the little foul. 
away from the basket. Four team fouls on each team. Caden second, second of the evening. Back out to Scoff, guarded yeah. by Merrifield. You had 30 seconds in the third. This is a big 30 second. Merritt again. gonna hold the ball. Reese can shoot from out there. Gonna go for one. You want your shot at around four seconds. Gives you a chance for a tip in. Tough, can't see the scoreboard here, so. Back to Reese Merritt. No good. So the quarter started with West up, excuse me, with prep up by 10, but West has cut into that lead. They're down eight as we head to quarter number four. High School Hoops is brought to you by Concussion Therapy and Recovery at Allied Services. Trust the experts to help you or your athlete for a safe return to play. Call 1-888-REHAB-PA or search concussion treatment at allied-services.org. We are at the Student Union Center, campus of Lackawanna College. There's Jack Lyons, his team down eight. Bob Ide and Matt Schaefer courtside. So West cut into the lead. What do they need now to cut it even closer? This is a big possession. You cut it to six here. That gives you some confidence going into the fourth quarter. Merrifield. Oh, that would have been big. But for City, another big offensive board. For City has four offensive rebounds, five offensive rebounds, <laughs> just in the third and the what, 15 seconds into the fourth. Here you go, ball goes up, effort. Easy foul call, Rossi with his arm through. Non-shooting foul. Rossi with two fouls. So another possession for West. Preps in face deny on Merrifield, so he just goes back door for his second bucket of the game. Nice cut for Merrifield, just his second basket of the game. Great pass. Down to six. Wes has done a nice job on Reese Merritt tonight for setting now guarding him. And Rossi's been quiet in the second half as well. With the left nice hand, though. Move. Patient move in the paint. Rossi owned the first quarter, played well in the second, didn't hear from him in the third. If he's back, I think he can close it out for prep. Here you go, you got two down. Let Scoff know. One of the things you can do here, if they see Scoff as a three-point shooter, you can put Merritt and Scoff on the same side so they can't, the defenders can't actually help off of Scoff. But at this point, why not just keep going through Robert Ross? He's <laughs> playing great. Showing his arsenal, right hand, left hand. Underneath and outside, Robert Rossi. Remember that name. Persetti, a tough shot up. Merritt. Wow. Look at the athleticism there. State. Reese Merritt keeps that ball with Scranton prep. I mean, he got up probably 11 feet to get that ball. Rossi unofficially with 17 points. Leads the Cavaliers. Prep slowing it down a little bit. Leads back up to 10. You can do that off of the two Rossi moves. Going to look into Reese Merritt. Buried in the paint. <laughs> yeah. Three guys came to him. He's fouled and he'll go to the line. That's great. Great high-low. Here you go, he catches it. Easy foul call. Obviously, C4 said he's asking for a three second call on that. Once he catches the ball in the paint and starts his move to the basket, the three second call will freeze. And if Reese would stop and kick the ball out, then they would go back to a three second counter call. 
Mayer with just seven points has not hit a free throw tonight. But is, the rest of his team has picked him up. The leading scorer coming in. Still been very athletic on the defensive side. He's changed shots, he's blocked shots, he's tipped rebounds, he's got a couple rebounds. He doesn't need to score to be to put his fingerprints all over this game. Back up to an 11-point lead as Merrifield goes underneath. Quick timeout, Jack Lyons. Going to talk to the referee about something. You know what's great when all of his assistant coaches are laughing. You see, Maiden, uh, Caden Merrifield has two buckets here in the fourth quarter. Both of them have been on backdoor cuts. And it's a direct result of Scranton Prep face guarding Caden Merrifield. <laughs> well, here's what Coach Lyons and his team will face. It's a three-game week this week. So they'll go to Valley View, and then they'll host Delaware Valley. Big game at Wall and Paul Pack. And there you see the rest of the schedule go back to Division I to end the year. Western Wayne could be a tough one on the... Yes. On the uh, and Holmesdale as well. Yep. It's tough, you know. You look at you look at Division One here for these guys. They, it's a tough matchup every single night. Because here's the other thing: if you're West Scranton and you're nine and two or eleven and two, and you go and you play Western Wayne or Delaware Valley, you're taking their best shot. Because right now you're one of the best in the area, so you're catching everybody's best shot. Well, the Invaders last year didn't have a uh, real good year, seven and seventeen. They finished overall, so they've already are up to nine wins this season. They turned it around, and they're in the thick of things. Not only are they in the thick of things, but when you look at their their lineup, they really only have one senior that is consistently yep. playing, and that's Lou and Fernandez. So what they're doing is building towards next year, and if this year they make a deep run, even better. It's more experience. They can just find that 6-3, guy. <laughs> There's Andrew Kettle. Last year, his team 24 and 4 went to the third round of states. And he constantly has prep playing against tough teams. So people look at it and they say, oh, you haven't done this. Yet. They make deep runs every year. They play some of the best teams in the state every single year. If you've never seen Robert Rossi play, remember that name. Downtown right with a big answer. Leads at eight. It's going to be a fun finish. You can tell already. But to, to finish the point on prep, he has guys that go and play college sports every single year. And that's that's what some people miss in some of this. He's putting kids into colleges. Nice move. Leo Boyle down at Lafayette, Division One. Again, all types of Logan Bailey. Uh, University of Scranton, right? Uh, player of the week this week yep. in the Landmark Conference. Barnes blocked by Rossi. Merritt. Ooh. Up. Takes looks a like huge hit. Interference. Yeah. That looked like something from a Cavalier football game. Here's Barnes. Patient move. Blocked by Rossi. Barnes's move might have been a little too slow. <laughs> Here you go, balls in Merrifield's hands. Again, it's working. Prep wants to keep going, face guard. Right short, he knew it. Right into the hands of Reese Merritt. We're under four, and we have a 10-point lead for the Cavaliers. Here's a nice part that Prep has. Mike Scoff can handle the ball, and what it does is it pulls one of, the, one of West's most athletic defenders out of help defensive position because he's so athletic. Mike, by Scoff being a threat to score, a threat to go to the basket. Three seconds, we have a timeout on the floor. 3.35 remaining in the game. Jack Lyons team down 10. Can they get back into it? We'll find out on the other side. The WWE SmackDown superstars are on Fox 56. Catch all the action each and every Friday night with two hours of brand new episodes on Fox 56. 
Matt Schaefer, a big fan of the WWE, I know. It's probably your boys at home, they probably do. They jump on each other, I'm sure. Yeah, you know, they haven't got into the, the <laughs> WWE on the TV, but I have seen a flying elbow from couch to couch. <laughs> yeah. Okay, back here, 10 point lead for the Cavaliers, the last 335, and West has to find some answer and to get the ball in the basket. Been a tough night for Caden Merrifield, just six points for the leading scorer. He's got the ball and he's cut off by Merritt quickly. Prep's doing a great job of focusing on Caden Merrifield. We'll take your 20 points away. If you can beat us after that, good for you. Barnes just had a nice night. He's the leading scorer. Oh, travel by Londell Wright as he went for the ball. That's a tough turnover. His prep, I'm sure, now is going to hold. Make this clock go down. Both teams trying to pick up their 10th win on the year. You know, we talked about before the game, key to the game for prep was points in the paint. Rossi and just playing like a man underneath. Rossi's helped, helped with that key to the game. I think everything but one of his buckets has been in the paint. Then you go get one rebound, shot goes up, get a second one. Up again, you get to go to the line for the fourth time tonight. Third foul on Fernandez. That's the seventh team foul on West. So Scranton Prep will be shooting from the line on all fouls. Rossi maybe a little bit tired. Missed that one. Very short. A little bit better on that. 18 for him. Here he leads go. the way. Look at what Prep's done again. They've just rotated defenders. So Caden Merrifield's seen a different defender almost every time down court. It's tough as an offensive player to, to adjust every time down. Barnes, front of the rim. I, I don't mind that shot. He's hit a couple tonight. He was open. And, and you don't have time no. to work it around. You're down 11. You need a couple threes to go. You need an offensive board. You need a stop for two or five in a row. Rossi living in the paint and owning it. Playing great. Barnes answers. Yeah, Barnes likes that shot. He is 18. Matches his, and he, it's a, actually a season high. He had 17 against Pittston area. Still a 10 point lead. Nice move. Tough board, it's 10 points. West is gonna have to push tempo here. Find Barnes the again. Go. Oh, Merritt a huge board. Timeout, Andrew Kettle and Scranton Prep, 119 remaining. His team up 10. Oh, Prep again leading the way right now in the district standings. Valley View right there. And there you see the rest of District 2 4A. Valley View and Prep, I think, will meet Saturday. Valley View just beat Scranton. I just saw it come across. I see at halftime, 33-10, uh, Holy Cross is beating, uh, Holy Cross is beating Carbondale. And I had heard it's a big, it'll be a big one for Calais. It might be 200 at Holy 500. Cross. Oh, oh, well 200, yeah, 500 overall. That's tonight. Yeah. It's yep. amazing. It's amazing. Couple other scores. Wilkes-Barre area is up early on Pittston and girls basketball. Mid Valley's over Old Forge and boys basketball. 119 left for West. They've already they lost Friday to Abington Heights. Could be too straight for the Invaders. Here's Merritt with the big slammerino. That's what we've been waiting for. That's nice to see. 
He's into double figures. Can't stop Brandon Barnes, though. He's shown that he can play his second three, and we have a foul. Well, the crowd got all hyped off the mare dunk, but then Barnes answers with a three. Yeah, big time that answer. That was a nice dunk. Tomahawk, two hands. Here it is. Look ahead. Reese Merritt, strong finish. That should just about do it as the white flag has come out for Jack Lyons. He's pulled his starters with 56 seconds left. He'll move on to play another day. Coach the Kettle's going to do the same. And yep, Coach Kettle, who will take on Abington Heights, and always a big game between the uh, Comets and Cavaliers. That'll be Thursday. Big round of applause from Scranton Prep faithful, as well as the West Scranton here in attendance. Nice crowd for a Tuesday night. Always nice hearing your name if you get in. Ryan Bresser for West. Ryan Bresser, Danny Keeler, Brett Miller, Jared Morris, and Sincere Terrell. Keeler and Terrell are both seniors with Jared Morris and Luis Fernandez for prep. At the line, Gavin Bednars. Bednars will come out. He's going to come out, and William Aldrich is in with Brady Stallman. Now, I think this is Brady's first game, isn't it? Because of the concussion? Yes. Then you got Brandon Roche, Matt Oven, Nick Caffarella is back in. And I think that's it. Yes, Stallman, a starter last year, has not played this year. Matt mentioned he's going to work his way back into game shape. That would be a, a nice advantage, bringing in a senior. That's right. That's been around the program, that understands. Yep. He's given to the program. That's another nice thing that Prep has. Uh, you know, I want to give a shout out to a young man that I've done some work with over the summer. Matt Dwyer, seven foot three, plays at Scranton Prep, has had some health issues, and it's amazing to see the commitment that he's had through that. Absolutely. Great game here. Prep with a 10 point win, 54 54 44. Prep will pick up their 10th win of the season. Matt, West Granton will drop to nine and four, both teams back into division play on Thursday. When Matt and I return, we'll talk to our Allied Services players of the game. I'll give out a nice plaque and we'll wrap it up here from Scranton. A big win by Scranton Prep, 54-44 over their division rival, West Scranton. Back with our Allied Services players of the game, Reese Merritt, and, and Reese, it started out slow. West was trying to take you out of the game, obviously, but your teammates picked it up. Yeah, uh, they played great defense right off the bat. Um, they were all over me, for sure. Um, but our guards did a good job moving around whenever I got it, and they were doubling and stuff, so they, they, made, it, they made up for it, for sure. What does this uh, division mean? Uh, what kind of parity? What kind of do we see each game? What, what's each game like in this division? Um, it's probably more competitive than it's been in I don't know how long. Definitely my four years. Um, so it's a lot of fun. All the teams are great, so it's fun. Last year you were hurt. Yeah, Leo Boyle, he was your other big guy this year. How about Talk about this sophomore right here, Robert Ross. This is my son right here. Um, <laughs> I've been taking him under, the, under my wing, but he's been killing it. Um, I couldn't ask for any more. He's been doing great. Robert, uh, you, you look like a man amongst uh, men alone's boys tonight, inside, outside, left hand, three-pointers. Um, what, what was going right for you tonight? Uh, the guard just gonna, did a good job of getting the ball inside and moving off the ball and just got his plays. Um, what has this guy taught you, Reese Merritt? Oh, he's, he's helped me. He took me under his wing and show, uh, showed me what he has and what to do. Uh, what is it, a, a nice win for you? What's this mean now? You, go, you have a tough game with Abington coming up. Yeah, that felt great today, but we have a better game uh, uh, playing against Abington next, uh, next game. Okay, tough week for these guys. Three games. Are, we'll give them our plaque. Allied Services, high school hoops champion. Hold that up, guys. Congratulations. Thank Win you. number 10 on the year for the Cavaliers. Thanks, guys. We'll bring in Matt Schaefer now. Uh, again, a, a nice win, convincing win. But, you know, West did play tough, and they had an early lead. They did. You know, we talked before the game about the keys to the game, and for, for prep it was own the paint, stop Merrifield. They did both. 
They ran different defenders at Merrifield every single time down court. And then you just saw the two guys that own the paint for Scranton Prep tonight. Talk about owning the paint. Uh, Forsetti for West Grand did a nice job. And Barnes, he had a, a nice career night. Yeah, you know, Forsetti, Forsetti, I think in the third quarter alone, had six, five, six offensive rebounds. And Brandon Barnes just sat at the three-point line and was the recipient of the hard work that Forsetti put in. Brandon Barnes with a career night, 20-plus points. Uh, played well to keep them in the game. And this is what you're going to see in this division just about every game that the Lackawanna League plays. That's right. Parity in Division One, Lackawanna League. It'll be fun to watch down the stretch. Absolutely. Fun to watch. We'll have uh, Bucknell basketball for you on Saturday night as the Bison take on Lehigh. Tip time for that, 7.05 right here on my TV. Our next high school game will be the pink game. Abington Heights and North Pocono girls basketball uh, action. Matt and I will be back at, uh, up at North Pocono for that special night, the pink game. That's Thursday, the 23rd at 7 o'clock. So for Matt Schaefer, the entire Fox 56 sports crew, this is Bob I saying so long from the Lackawanna County Student Union Center. Scranton Prep with a 10-point win. <laughs>